Let's look at the main parts of a rear differential. First, we find the main housing, which surrounds all the internal components. Somewhere on the casing, there will be a removable plate, allowing access to the internal gears. The casing stops debris from the road damaging the internal gears. It also retains oil within the housing to lubricate the gears and reduce wear. If we remove the housing, we can see the various gears which are attached to the axles. These are supported by a number of bearings to ensure a smooth rotation. The engine will provide power via the input gear, which is known as the drive pinion gear. The pinion gear connects to the ring gear, which is much larger. Notice the gears are spiral cut. They could be straight cut, but a spiral cut increases the contact surface area. In this example, we have 43 ring teeth and 11 pinion teeth, and so the ratio is about 3.9 to 1. A low ratio increases the fuel efficiency, but it decreases acceleration. A high ratio decreases fuel efficiency, but it increases acceleration. So car designers need to take this into consideration. The ring gear is mounted to the differential casing. This then supports two smaller internal gears known as the spider gears. The spider gears are often joined with a small metal shaft. When the ring gear rotates, the spider gears will travel around the same axis. However, the spider gears can rotate on their own axis. We use two spider gears to distribute the forces evenly. The spider gears connect with two other gears known as the side gears. One connects to the left wheel axle and the other connects to the right wheel axle. The spider gears will allow the axles to rotate at different speeds while still transferring torque and rotation to the wheels. So let's see how that works. You can also learn how the starter motor and the car battery work in our previous videos. Links down below for that. Let's understand how the open differential works. The engine is providing the power through the pistons moving up and down, which rotates the camshaft. This transfers through the clutch and into the transmission. The power then transfers through the selected gears within the transmission and then out to the drive shaft. The drive shaft transfers this into the differential at the rear of the car. From here, it is distributed out to each of the rear wheels. And by the way, we have covered how the transmission works in great detail previously. Links down below for that. Looking inside the differential, the drive shaft is connected to the pinion gear. This is directly connected to the ring gear. So the drive shaft rotates the pinion gear, which rotates the ring gear. As the ring gear rotates, the casing must also rotate. And as the spider gears are attached to this, they rotate with the casing. If the car is traveling in a straight line, the force is equal on both rear wheels. So the spider gears will not spin on their axis as they rotate with the casing. They transfer the torque into the side gears, causing them to rotate, which rotates the axles and tires propelling the car forwards. The side gears and the spider gears will rotate at the same speed and direction as the ring gear. If the car was lifted up, when we look inside, we can see that all the gears are able to turn on their own axis when needed. If you turned the wheels by hand, you could turn one wheel and the other wouldn't move. You could also turn both wheels together, or you could even turn them in opposite directions. When the car turns right, the left wheel, axle and side gears must rotate faster, and the right wheel, axle and side gear must slow down. So while turning, the wheels are both rotating forwards. The left gear is just rotating faster, causing the spider gear to rotate and slow the right gear down. The difference in speed between the side gears is inversely proportional. Let's see what I mean. Going straight, both wheels might rotate at say 300 RPM, but when turning right, the left wheel might rotate at 360 RPM, while the right side wheel rotates at 240 RPM. So while one increases, the other decreases and the difference is inversely proportional to each other. Check out one of these videos to continue learning about automotive engineering.
And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, TikTok, and theengineeringmindset.com.